Hello everybody and welcome back to our brand new episode of NASCAR Heat for Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we go to Dover in both the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series. There you see the news for today's episode. Gary Owen earned his 10th career win at the Roval in the last episode. Jimmy Johnson was uh, eliminated in the last round so the drive for 8 will have to wait or chasing 8 will have to wait now as Danny Hamlin questions uh, Owen's respect level after that Roval finish when we got into him quite heavily on that final lap and Chase Elliott seems to have found a lot more uh, late season speed here now as the playoffs get going so obviously now coming into the Xfinity Series race this was actually an elimination race I believe here for the Xfinity Series but we had uh, Zane Gavin in the car for us today and our chances weren't looking great coming into this race we've actually had a bit of a rough start from uh, the uh, Richmond race earlier in the playoffs so that put us quite a ways behind coming into this race here in Dover now as you see Zane battling with Austin Sindrick he would get passed by Sindrick and then as it came through turns three now on uh, this would be the final lap running behind Sindrick trying to run him down but just didn't quite have the speed to get there out of turns four so Zane Gavin comes through to cross the line to finish in the 12th position and unfortunately our team did not get to the next round here in the Xfinity Series as we did miss it by 30 points now as it's P10 in the points but we come to Cup Series qualifying for myself here in Dover we come through to cross the line for the first race of this round of 12 with a 20 3.108 and we go P6 here for Dover so a very strong qualifying effort that hopefully we can carry the speed into this first race of the round of 12 with Kyle Larson on pole. The playoffs continue at Dover International Speedway. This race marks the beginning of the round of 12. After four drivers were eliminated last week, the drivers are ready. Miles the Monster is ready. So pull up a chair. NASCAR Playoff Racing is coming up next. All right. Thank you, Rick Allen. We're ready to go green here at Dover. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. and Kurt Busch both going to the back. Truex gave up qualifying position for new tires, but Kurt Busch, he failed pre-race inspection. So that's where you're going to see the one car at the back of the field. Now, that's two playoff contenders. Keep in mind now as we get ready to go green and start this first race of the round of 12 here in the playoffs. Now, Kyle Busch up there in P4. We're going to have to watch out for him today as the green flag is out and we are underway. Kyle Larson leads the field here in Dover. Kevin Harvick, our teammate just in front of us, Joey Logano joins Kyle Larson on that front row and immediately Logano actually has the advantage over Larson but now Larson fights back through turns one and out of turns two as we head down this back straightaway for the first and opening lap here of this race. Brad Kozlowski just on my outside at this point as we go down into turns three. Kyle Busch getting aggressive early on trying to make a three wide between Kevin Harvick and Joey Logano as they exit turns four. Larson just trying to cover all three cars there uh, behind him as we go down into turns one. Larson goes all the, way, all the way to the top. Then we get hit in the left rear by the 11 of Denny Hamlin. That moves me up the track now as Hamlin was not waiting around at all. And we were battling up the inside of Keselowski at this point. We would be able to just kind of cruise right on by the uh, two car here. The 42 went all the way to the top and that allowed me to get into the inside of Larson as well. So all of a sudden we pass Larson and take P5 away. As you see now Logano goes all the way to the top on lap three and then he slows up a little bit right there in front of us. So we lunge now to the inside and try to take the fourth position away from the Penske Racing driver. Sure enough, through the center of the corner, we would carry the momentum to get clear of Logano on the exit of the corner. Then next, we were running down Denny Hamlin here on the back straightaway into turns three. We would get to the inside of the 11 car through turns three and turns four. Harvick out front, Kyle Busch second. We move through now to take over third, but Kyle Busch, he would get to the inside now of Kevin Harvick and pass him as we came through out of turns two on lap seven. So obviously now I have a chance to pass my Stuart Haas Racing teammate as we go down into turns three. And sure enough, we're going to be able to make the pass stick on Kevin Harvick and take over the second position. So myself and Kyle Busch up in the top two on lap 10 now. We're trying to close that gap in to the 18 of Kyle as we had kind of driven away from everybody. Let's go down into turns three. The 18 of Kyle Busch blows the right front tire into the wall. He goes hard. Heavy contact for a playoff driver. And that would take Kyle Busch out of this race. This would be a DNF for Kyle Busch in stage one, which could be a huge hit to the driver's playoff hopes now as this would put us out in front for the next restart alongside Denny Hamlin here. So Kyle Busch, there you see uh, on the pit lane, there is an extra dot, and that is from the 18 of Kyle Busch, who is out of this race. He doesn't have quite the playoff uh, points that he had last season when he had like 9 or 10 wins. So this is going to be a huge hit for the one-time champion. Yes, one-time champion because still we started this career mode before Kyle Busch won a second championship. So he's still a one-time champion now. He's come through turns three and out of turns four leading the way as Harvick would try to take second from Denny Hamlin. But all of a sudden it just felt like 
maybe the race was handed to me because Kyle Busch was probably the fastest car but we came through leading the way on lap 22 of 29 at this point as we went down into turn 3 second place belonging to Denny Hamlin though but in turns 1 big issues for Landon Castle who goes spinning and then he goes up in the air and over and he sticks the landing Landon Castle with the style points now as a caution would come out late in stage 1 we would all pit for two cans of fuel four tires and we would still come out here in P1 getting ready to go back green now as a green flag is back out this time Eric Jones joins me on the front row Jones has been fast this whole season and he had a really rough race uh, to start the playoffs and that completely ruined his whole chance at advancing into this second round if you remember at Richmond that was a, just a complete mess of a race the playoffs this season have been pretty wild other than I think Las Vegas has been the most calm but Richmond was wild the Roval was wild and all ready to start over here it's been pretty uh, entertaining so far as we exit turns four, leading the way over Denny Hamlin and sure enough we would continue to lead as we started the final lap here of stage one trying to carry the momentum over from our Roval win last episode uh, to get win number three of the season. We're going to carry it down this back straightaway on this uh, final lap in the first stage and obviously if we just hang on for one more corner, we're going to have an extra playoff point and 10 points additionally to add to our gap over the cut line as we come through to win stage one here in Dover. So definitely looking very strong again here today. Now is Michael McDowell up here in P4 in the stage. A great effort from him. Tyler Reddick up in P9 who got eliminated last episode. Eric Almarola uh, in the top 10. So hoping to see all the Stuart Haas cars advance into that next round as well. Other than Clint Boyer, obviously, who did not make the playoffs. But either way, we did not have to come to the pit lane at the end of the stage, which means we will probably have to make a green flag pit stop here in stage right, two we'll if it stays there. green now as we're ready to go ready? green to start the second stage now as the green flag is underway behind us you see Joey Logano on that second row joined with Michael McDowell who got fourth in stage one 27 laps here in the second stage so definitely gonna have to make a green flag pit stop if we do not get a caution as we come through turns one and two sliding a little bit there on the exit of the corner and the car wasn't really uh, loose in stage one but I noticed that after we made that pit stop I didn't make any adjustments to the car but after we put four fresh tires on it it seems to actually be pretty loose on the short run as you can see me sliding a little bit there on the exit of turns four as we lead this first and opening lap though of this second stage here in Dover Logano the two-time champion now trying to close up on the back of us he wants to make it three championships this season as we go down this back straightaway Truex as well a two-time champion keep that in mind as we came to you uh, out of turns four now on lap five of the stage continuing the lead we started stretching out the gap to Logano Logano here throughout the stage now up to lap 10 about four car lengths or so maybe between myself and Logano we would drive away from him though now on lap 16 dealing with lap traffic and we had to start thinking about the green flag pit stops the field was starting to run low at this point so I was preparing to come in with about two laps of field left and we would run down Bubble Wallace on lap 18 and I decided there was two, field la two laps of field in the car so I decided we were going to come in to make our pit stop right here as we come through down into turns three and we get onto the apron and we actually go sliding through turns four around we go we keep it going but now the caution comes out here as we drop down to p5 a big change of events nearly but the caution comes out and saves us from our own mistake we obviously had to pit for two cans of fuel four tires and i could have just came in and done the pit stop but i decided to actually just uh hit the a button in advance and kind of take a penalty on myself and instead of going through to the lead for my own mistake i decided we would like i said take that penalty and go down to p4 here for the restart now down in turns one late in the second stage at this point as when I came to the pit lane it was just a hundred percent on me uh, it was kind of a late call on myself uh, coming to the pit lane and then I just kind of on the transition from the track to the apron I just completely screwed it up and obviously you can see the effect that it had now as Logano though leads the way on the exit of the corner side by side there with Hamlin Hamlin got into us earlier in this race when he just drove into my left rear and shot me up the track so definitely got to keep that in mind as we're going to go three wide for a moment there for the lead now as we exit turns two slamming into the 11 just like we did in the roll he sideways he hangs on to it now as we clear Hamlin for that second position so now we would put the pressure on Logano with two laps to go certainly not getting along quite well with Denny Hamlin recently as we're side by side for the lead with the Penske drivers we go down this back straight away a lap and a half to go in the stage Hamlin lurking down in that third position as we hit the apron into turns three Logano already pretty tight on our doors he has to move up the track with myself there as we exit turns four Logano clear for the lead as the white flag for stage two is in the air as we go down into turns 
Lawrence went a little bit of a shot to his bumper, and instead of maybe loosening him up, he goes further ahead, and then the 11 gets into the side of me again here and turns two down this back straightaway. Okay, Danny, I see how it's going to be throughout the rest of this playoffs. If you want to race like this now, as you come through turns three and out of turns four, Joey Logano is going to win stage two, Hamlin second, myself in P3. Danny Hamlin and myself clearly uh, have a little bit a little bit of beef going or something because at the Roval finish, obviously we came together quite uh, significantly and then he hit me earlier in this race and then I hit him just a few moments ago and then he hits us right back. So that's uh, what the fourth time we've gotten together since the Roval. Now as we would get ready to go green though for this third and final stage, Hamlin takes the lead on the pit lane now as we're back underway here for this third and final stage from the third position, Logano P2 Harvick just behind us as well as I believe that's Ricky Stenos Jr. up here in the mix even now has come through turns one and two. Hamlin gets an incredible launch with help from my front bumper obviously now as we're side by side a little bit of contact there with the 22 there as we just kind of came together out of turns two but he goes all the way to the top as we're all the way on the bottom through turns three trying to clear that 22 of Logano sure enough out of turns four we clear Joey Logano for that second position as we go down into turns one trying to now set our sights on Denny Hamlin there but we go for a little bit of a slide of the track now and Logano's right on my rear quarter panel as we exit turns when we actually hit the wall a little bit there and Logano pounces on the opportunity thankfully no damage was done to the cars I got out of the throttle in time but we come to lap 65 and I would go back up the inside of the 22 as we exit the corner he's going to try and fight back but we would be able to clear him so now we advance to lap 69. Nice at this point. Out of turn two, we were starting to close back in on the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Now with just a little bit over 30 to go, he was running that top lane in turns three, and he was uh, sometimes he was running the bottom in turns one and two, and then the top in turns three and four. And that would close me right up every time we came through the center of turns three and four. And then in turns one, he actually runs the top this time. So now we lunge to the inside of Denny Hamlin with 31 laps to go, trying to take the lead here. Now as we exit turns two, nearly hitting the 11. As we know, Denny Hamlin, the way he's raced us today the way we raced each other. I don't think he's going to give up a fight now as he hits the brakes on us on lap 71 because of Jamie McMurray who was slowing up just in front of us. That was certainly a weird moment but out of turns four now I'm trying to make sure we don't plow down into the wall. So then Hamlin lunges back to the inside as we go down into turns one a little bit of contact there with the 11 and he gets clear again for the lead as we exit turn two but on lap 74 he's once again on that top lane as we exit the corner side by side with the Joe Gibbs racing driver trying to take that lead away and just get away. We know we have have a car capable of winning. We proved that in stage one and stage two before we obviously made our pit error, but Hamlin would stay clear, but then again, he goes back to the top. I try to get back into this fight, and we get clear of him, but then I just didn't quite chop his nose. I decided to be at least a little bit respectful to the points leader. Now as we come through down into turns one and two, just trying my best to get the position as we're close on the exit of two, but Hamlin hangs on to the lead, not giving up this battle now as we came through on lap 79, approaching a lap car. This is our good opportunity to make Maybe use Ryan Truex as a pick to slow up Hamlin on lap 79 and sure enough we make a little bit of contact on the exit of the corner and now the 71 will indeed hold up the 11 of Hamlin as we go down into turns one we clear him but then we hit the apron sideways Jones is here as well now as we slide up the track and now Hamlin back to the lead again and, and we got Eric Jones now who will come through to take the second position as we hit him a little bit down into turns three as we're hitting everybody today great racing here today in Dover. Jones would actually look to the inside of Hamlin on lap 82 and I decide we're going to go three wide for the lead and it turns one now but we slide up so we have to get out of the throttle as we come through the center of the corner. Out of turns through the caution comes out with 19 laps to go here in Dover now. So obviously this puts us in a situation. Do we want to pay for two cans of fuel and four tires? No, we just decided one can right side tires would be the call and this pushes us up to P2 alongside Denny Hamlin on the front row. Now the green flag is back out and it's a terrible restart for the 11 of Denny Hamlin. So all of a sudden I'm out front now obviously uh, the way the game is they restart you both at the same time. So if you beat the leader to the line, it's not like you drop the start. So that would not have been a penalty to myself now as we exit turns two, heading down this back straight away. Hamlin knows he needs to clear Joey Logano see if he wants a chance to battle back as we go down into turns three. And I went down into turns three and the car just slid right up the track, not enjoying two tires at all. And of course, the 11 of Denny Hamlin hops on that opportunity. He would once again, though, go back to the top lane. And then out of turns two, we were trying to pass him for that lead, but we know Hamlin the way he's been today. He was one of the only cars that I really couldn't pass when they were running the top lane as we come through turns 
three and out of turn four. Only a little bit over 10 laps to go. At this point, Logano and Jones side by side behind us for that third position as we came through now on lap 89. Out of turns four, Hamlin still up top as we slide on the exit for three wide with the lead. Logano pounces on the opportunity. Hamlin clears going on into turns one as we drop down to P3 at this point. And Logano, he would just go right up to the 11 and drive right on by him, which kind of frustrated me quite a bit that the 22 was so easily able to pass the 11 of Danny Hamlin. So now we come through turn three. There you see him clears the 11. So now I'm doing everything I can to make sure I get clear of Hamlin on lap 92. Finally out of turn two, I decided to just put it in the throttle harder. And if I put the 11 in the wall, I was going to do it. But thankfully we clear him without even making contact. So now we're trying to focus on running down that 22 of Logano here in the final laps. Now as we hit lap 94, seven laps to go, closing in on the 22 within a car like this. We go into turns one. The caution comes out and this will force us a late race restart here in Dover to decide the first race of the round of 12. Is it going to be myself or Logano advancing or maybe someone else? We're about to find We're out. Keselowski on that third position, ready to pounce, as well as Truex is up here in P4, as the green flag is out, and we're on the way. We actually get a better launch than Logano as well, like we did on Hamlin. Not quite as good as go down into turns one. Logano's still there on my inside. I was hoping that I could clear him there into the corner as we come through turns two. He gets clear of myself. Hamlin, Truex, Jones, three JGR cars up in the mix. Now it's going to slice down in front of the Penske driver of Keselowski and go up the inside of his teammate of Joey Logano for that lead position. As we come through turns three, and out of turns four at the line. It's only three laps to go here in Dover's wrist side by side with the two-time champ of Joey Logano. We hit the apron there into turns one and we go sliding. Logano trying to stay clear as we exit turns two. It's going to be close contact is made with the 22 of Logano Kislowski trying to get to my inside. I kind of blocked him off making sure we weren't going to go down into turns three, three wide because I knew that would probably mess me over more than anyone as we exit turns four still side by side with Logano when we hit just two laps to go here in Dover trying to advance our our way in to the round of eight with my first ever Dover victory. I think this would be now as we're also looking for two wins in a row and career win number 11 as we go down this back straightaway side by side with Logano a lap and a half to go. Hamlin now side by side behind us with Keselowski. He runs that top lane trying to utilize that momentum on the exit of the corners. We're side by side still with Logano at the line. The white flag is in the air. Logano would have won if that was a checker but we still have one more lap to try and take the win away from the 22 side by side since the restart as we exit turns two. A bit of door banging with the 22s. We're still nose to nose as we go down into turn three. For the final time, Keselowski right there as we come through the center of the corner trying to take the win. We slide as we're side by side coming to the line, but we make contact and we win. End over. What a finish again. This playoff has been really good for finishes and races. This whole race was good here today in Dover, and we barely get Logano at the line by about half a car length or so uh, with the victory for us, putting us now into the round of eight. Win number four on the season, which I believe does tie uh, the most wins we've had in the season because I think we hit four last season as well. So very, very happy with that now as we don't have to worry about Talladega or Kansas two tracks that sometimes can go either way for myself so obviously now we just kind of have to focus on I think winning Martinsville that's really the big race for us because we know we're gonna probably have some struggles at Texas that round of eight is what gets us every time because we struggle at Texas we struggle at ISM race where Phoenix Raceway it's called now but there you see the playoff grid Kyle Busch with his DNF is now only one point to the good so we cannot afford a bad finish now as I said after the race what a day this is our year so proud of this team as we're really picking up the momentum now after that Roval finish and that bounce back in Richmond as our worst finish so far in the playoffs is seventh. We've had two sevenths and two wins. So very happy with how this has gone so far. We've been extremely consistent in the playoffs. We haven't really screwed anything up too much. So I've been happy uh, with that. I think we finally cleaned up a bit of the mess that we had going on in the regular season. So we've cleaned it up at the right time. We did have a special contract offer there from Rose Fenway. Obviously, I'm not going to be taking that up uh, now. As uh, as always, though, if you guys did enjoy this episode, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Those would all be very appreciated. In the next one, though, we go to Talladega. 
Who knows what's going to happen in Talladega, but what I do know is with the win here today in Dover, we can go to Talladega and just be as aggressive as we want. I'm probably not going to just ride the bottom uh, to get to the front. I'm probably going to try and make some moves in the middle, probably up top as well, and see what we can do. But there you see now the playoff grid for the final time. So there you see Kurt Busch, Truex, Moment, and Newman all on the outside looking in. Truex, a bit of a surprise, but I'll see you guys in the next one. So thank you for watching, everybody, and have yourselves a great day.